We are live this morning. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday. It's first Friday of the month. It's September 1st. How is everybody doing this morning of September? September morn. In the Philippines, they'll be playing Christmas carols already by today. <laughs> okay. Let us go right ahead and do our gospel commentary. The gospel is going to come from St. Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. Okay. Jesus told his disciples a parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them. They were not prepared to meet the bridegroom. But the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they were off to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. The door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake. For you know neither the day nor the hour. <clears throat> so, stay awake. We heard this also yesterday, right? Stay awake. And our Lord is also warning us about the same thing and, and trying to remind us that we always have to be prepared for the time when the bridegroom, in this case, the bridegroom is Jesus, Jesus Christ, the bridegroom is going to come, uh, his second coming, right? And he's going to uh, take us. He's going to uh, bring us in to the kingdom of heaven. And once he gets in there and we're not ready to be with him, well, the doors are going to be closed and bye-bye. Those of us who are not prepared to join the bridegroom, to join Jesus in his kingdom in heaven, will not gain any entrance, right? So we have to be very well prepared all the time. But I'd like to bring up another point here, uh, another point about these foolish virgins, and which is related to our preparedness to uh, accompany our Lord um, in his eternal glory in heaven. And it has to do with the way the foolish virgins were performing their tasks. See, there were 10 virgins, right? Um, and this was a wedding feast. So you'll imagine that these 10 virgins might be like our modern day uh, bridesmaids and, uh, and groomsmen, right? They perform an official function for the bride and the groom, see? Um, they have some official functions that they perform for them. Now, these bridesmaids and groomsmen... They're normally the friends of the grooms and the brides, right? They have some special relationship with the groom and the bride. They are specially chosen to accompany the groom and the bride in the whole preparation process for their wedding and to be part of the entourage and all of that. So they are intimate friends with the groom and the bride. They have a special role to play, right? They are part of the official entourage, so you would imagine these people as someone being close to them, close to them. There's a special relationship. Now, same thing is true with these foolish virgins here. They should have had that special relationship with the bride's groom, right? With the groom. But for some reason, it looks like that relationship was not solid, right? They, it was not tight. Some of them, half of them, were just doing it perhaps out of official uh, reasons. They were there for just to perform a task. Not really because they were there to love the bridegroom. Not because they were really there uh, uh, to show their, their intimate relationship with the couple that they were serving in this instance of this wedding. 
right? And I'd like us to understand that sometimes we can be like these foolish virgins, okay? Sometimes we can do things officiously, like officially, right? Without really meaning to do what we do, without really understanding the full extent uh, of, of our uh, uh, responsibilities as Catholics and, and our obligations as Catholics. Okay? Sometimes we Catholics, we, we, we go to Mass just because we have to go to Mass, right? It's really more out of obligation, that we go to Mass without really understanding what the Mass is all about. Without understanding why we are there and what's happening at the altar and, and, and what it will do for us. Right? Uh, that's why, that is why uh, it's funny, but it's true, that, uh, that one of the busiest times of the year is uh, in the churches would be what? Christmas. Well, Christmas is one, but also Easter Lent, right? When it comes to Ash Wednesday... It's a Wednesday, and the church is packed full of people. Everybody wants ashes on their heads, right? Well, I'm sorry to say <laughs> it's a sad reality, but uh, how come the churches are not as full every Sunday? Why is it it's all, the, the churches are that full only on days like Ash Wednesday, Easter Sunday, Christmas? Well, it's sad to know that there are plenty of official Catholics in this way, right? They tend to go for those official uh, recognitions that they are Catholic because they have ashes on their heads or because they uh, uh, went to do this or went to do that. Or they pray novenas, novena after novena after novena without even understanding what they're mouthing, what they're verbalizing in these novenas, right? Uh, they, they even fast for Lent. They even go around carrying crosses, uh, but they only do that during Lent. <laughs> right? They 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 do, they flagellate themselves. They sacrifice. They even uh, crucify themselves. In some countries, it's a culture. But but the rest of the year, what happens? Hey, what happens? So it's a sad reality, but it's a it's a reality that plenty of people are uh, performing and doing their their Catholic uh, obligations precisely just that way as an obligation. They are doing it in an officious way, like these foolish virgins. And because they are foolish in that sense, they did not really take to heart what they needed to do to serve the bridegroom properly. Right? They were careless. They didn't take extra oil with them right? so that they could wait uh, until the real arrival of the bridegroom. And, and you know, be really prepared to do what it, do what it takes to perform their tasks. Now, we can fall into that temptation. We can fall into that temptation doing things out of motives that are not really the most noble of motives. Right? We might be going to church just so that people will see us going to church. Right? We might be going to church just to display our signature uh, uh, clothing and that uh, you know we display ourselves for the for the uh, others to see, like the Pharisee uh, um, in the in the gospel, right in front of the church and say, "Oh God, I thank you that I'm not like this publican, etc., uh, etc." Et right? I fast, I give tithes, etc. So sometimes we might be going there to church and doing. Um, our own thing instead of being there to worship God, right? And, and being there for the right motives. So, and our Lord would scold us and our Lord would say, hey, you foolish virgins, I don't know you. Sorry. <laughs> the door is closed now. I'm not going to get, get you to heaven. I don't know you. Okay? I don't know you because we did not really have a close relationship with our Lord. So, what am I trying to say here? We, we have to try to always do things for the right motives. For the right motives. For the right reason. And really, there is only one worthy, good reason for doing the things we do as Catholics. And what would that be? What would that reason be? Huh? To, be, to, become, to become a saint, yes, but how is the way to go there? What is the, what is the motivation that will keep us 
uh, keep our eyes focused on heaven. For the greater glory and honor of God. Actually, for the love of God. See? That's good, Jacob. See? For the love of God. Because you will only give glory to God if you love God. See? You will only give glory to God if you love God. So the only real motive, which is worth which is worth keeping in our minds and keeping before us and keeping us on the road to heaven would be out of love for God. Out of love for God. We should only be doing things for love of God. And no other reason is even close to being uh, worthy of consideration as a motive for living our Catholic faith very well. Right? And that's exactly what, uh, what our Lord has been uh, telling us in these other gospel uh, readings of the past days, right? We've heard that lawyer and that Pharisee asking, what's the most important thing among all of these commandments, right? We, we heard these things within the last month, right? And what did our Lord say twice in the gospels of this past month? It's only one thing that's really necessary, right? Love God. Love God above all things with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and Love your neighbor as yourself, as a consequence of the love for God, right? So one way to one way to uh, to help ourselves not do things officiously eh, and become just labeled as official Catholics, let us do things out of love for God. That's the only motive that is worth considering. That's the only motive uh, uh, worth living for. Right? Love for God. So let's go to Mass out of love for God. Not just to fulfill a commandment. Let us pray because we want to talk to our loved one, Jesus Christ. Not because we're forced to pray. Right? Let's pray the rosary because we love Our Lady. Not because we are afraid of the consequences that Fatima, Our Lady of Fatima, has said if you don't pray. No. Uh, let, let's avoid sin, not because we are afraid of hell, right? As we pray in the, in the act of contrition, right? What do we say in the act of contrition? Right? Yes, I'm afraid of going to hell, but... Eh? How's the act of contrition again? Hardly sorry for having offended thee, right? And I detest all my sins because I dread the loss of heaven. I dread, it's a fear, right? Loss of heaven. But most of all, because I have offended thee, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love. See? So the reason for avoiding sin is love, really love, not out of fear of hell or not because we are afraid of losing heaven. Right? Love. Love is the only reason why we should do what we do. And today, by the way, is First Friday. Today is the first Friday. What is the essence of first Friday? What is the essence of first Friday? What, Joseph? Okay, okay. We try to commemorate every first Friday the sacred heart of Jesus, right? The sacred heart of Jesus. Um, uh, Jesus appeared to uh, uh, Margaret Mary Alacoque in, uh, uh, sometime in uh, 1673, I think, somewhere there. 1673 uh, um, and, 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 uh, and um, uh, telling her telling her that you know uh, um, you know that, uh, showing her that uh, her, showing her his heart his sacred heart okay? his his sacred heart that bled and continues to bleed for for us for for our sins right um, uh, showing his merciful and compassionate heart right uh, that that uh, that that is there always ready to forgive and have mercy on our foolish hearts, right? On our hardened hearts, on our hearts that, that are selfish, you know, our selfish hearts. And we think only of ourselves and, and, and we don't really do things for the love of God. See, the selfish heart that does not reciprocate the love that Jesus has offered for us. So we are reminded every first Friday of this sacred heart of Jesus. That we should try to always remember, God bless you, remember the sacred heart of Jesus. That good and humble, merciful, gentle uh, heart of Jesus. That we would try to emulate and at the same time try to love 
Okay? So let us shun the temptation of being officious Catholics and do things always only for the love of God. The love of God is the only motive worth living and dying for. And that's the way that we would merit the invitation of our Lord for the virgins that we are, the good virgins, hopefully, and not the foolish ones, come and enter into the, the wedding feast. Okay, Joe, what's your, you have a question? What's that? Oh. That's a foolish Joe right there. <laughs> okay, everybody, I hope you have a good weekend. Uh, enjoy your Friday, and um, we'll see if we can do this tomorrow. If not, we'll see you on Monday. Have a good weekend, everybody. Bye. Bye.